Good morning, afternoon. <laughs> I guess it's afternoon. Chameleon Academy, thank you very much for joining me here. We're going to be talking about chameleons today. And uh, we'll wait for everybody to join in. Hit that live button. Thank you, live feed ASMR. I appreciate, appreciate the encouragement to help help get this get this out. Let's see. I'm going to bring in everything. Hello, Rick. Hello, Gabriel. Very good to see you all. Yep, uh, Howard. I am sorry to disappoint you, but I did show up to my own live feed. Ha, 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 ha. Take that, world. Uh, hello, Heather. Ryan. Genevieve. Very good to see you all. Oh, let's see. I think Heather, uh, that's a new name. I think, uh, welcome. I'm glad you uh, dropped by here. Enjoy, I hope you enjoy a, a little chameleon talk going on here. Ah, Jason, very good to see you. So, well, everybody, uh, this uh, this week I had someone, uh, oh, well, I'll say hello to Ethel. Hello, Ethel B., and uh, and everybody and everybody, you know that this uh, this show is definitely interactive, and I have absolutely no problem interrupting my uh, my sentence to say hello to people, uh, because that's what interactive is all about. Oh, Joanne's here! <laughs> very very good to see you, and Ruthless. Actually, I don't know who Ruthless is, but you know what? I'll remember the screen name. Um, Heather says. It's my first coffee Saturday. I have two newborn Jacksons I want to keep alive. Okay, well, you know what? You came to the perfect <laughs> uh, uh, Saturday uh, because we're going to be talking about taking care of hatchlings, which is the same for being newborn Jacksons. So, and uh, Patrick's asking uh, if all is well and all is well. Now, this week, I had uh, someone uh, uh, for, uh, named Laura, Lauren uh, come and uh, ask about her cage set up for her hatchling panther chameleon. And uh, it actually looks pretty good. But I said, you know what? This would be a great, ex uh, a great thing to share with the entire group. And so I got Lauren's permission to use her case study, study uh, for how to take care of a hatchling. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is giving you a, a bit of a presentation of general, generally speaking, uh, just one scenario as to how to take care of uh, a hatchling chameleon, and then we'll talk about her particular case. And so, uh, let's see. Uh, hello, Chris, Zev Green, Katrina. Hello, and Ethel has ten baby Honelli born on Wednesday. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, and, and Ethel, my uh, my talk here is going to be on uh, how to take care of a single hatchling. Now, when you have multiples, the absolute best thing to do is to separate them all and uh, give them all their own cage in all conditions. And so, uh, yeah, it, it's a it's a tall order, but it is best. Oh my goodness, we have uh, Chameleon Cartel. Uh, it was always uh, very, very good to see Don in the way he uh, he uh, presents chameleons at the show. And Eliza Ann. Oh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, Eliza, thank you very much. I had a little help from Eliza, but I have to wait until uh, Jenny comes. Hello, Tia. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. We got someone with their latte. And um, I'm going to have to get... I've been uh, spending all this time saying hello to people, and I love doing that. But I'm going to have to get to the main event here. And so let's go ahead and bring it up. I actually made a uh, a uh, a presentation that we can go through. But no, hello, Ranunculus. And uh, Stephanie's getting her latte ready now. So give me a second while I pull this up. All right. So we, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, reverse things that you've been heard, uh, th things that you've heard over these last many, many, many years. Uh, and 
the the reason is that we need a a reliable way for people to raise up uh, one hatchling panther chameleon and in the past we've always talked about hatchlings as in okay 20 or 30 how do we take care of them but with the recent trend of uh, egg sales uh, we're now having people who don't have experience with chameleons having to uh, raise up a baby and so uh, the challenge for someone like me is to figure out uh, what's the best way to help someone like this. Now, yes, the people who sold the egg should be the ones helping out in hand holding, but that's not happening. So, man, that's a totally different subject. Uh, my job that I'm going to take on, and I have decided I'm going to take on, is to help these people as much as is possible. And so, this is part of that. And uh, yeah, I'll. I should uh, make this into a video, but we're going to go ahead to do this live and you can ask questions uh, as we uh, as we go. And so, uh, yeah, Howard's oh, OK. So see, this is it. <laughs> we were all get the hate chameleon kit. Da thumbs down, thumbs down. Uh, yes. And that is because uh, it was sold with adult chameleons or uh, the chameleons are going to soon be adult. But I want everybody to give this, come come here with an open mind. Uh, we, if we've got to figure out the best way for someone to take care of a hatchling, I'm going to go ahead and go against the grain here and say the chameleon kit is actually a good product uh, because it's uh, definitely available. And so, oh, James is here. Uh, so guys, just give me uh, give me the chance to make my case, and uh, and you can we can have a fun time in the in, in the comments. Now, uh, just to let you know, everything that I'm going to uh, show here has actually been uh, tested out by me and repeated. I have raised up three hatchling chameleons in the chameleon kit, and this is how I did it. And there is little baby Clancy, who was uh, one of the test hatchlings and if you see on my instagram uh, you see a lot of and on youtube videos you see a lot of clancy the veiled chameleon because clancy's all grown up now and is uh, is being an awesome uh an awesome veiled chameleon love clancy and that's him when he was a baby and he was raised in a chameleon kit um oh and there's my panther so yes i uh, also raised a panther in the chameleon kit as well um, Joe, yeah, Joanne, oh, little Clancy, so cute. So, uh, yes, <laughs> um, you, the way to make it work with the chameleon kids, you got to do everything right and exactly right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the beast of the moment. So this is our, uh, this is our chameleon kit. And the question is, can you even make what's on the box? Look at that. Uh, that, uh, you know, that looks pretty chintzy, but can you make it? Uh, with what? And the answer is no. You cannot make <laughs> what you see on the box uh, with uh, what's in the box. This is, this is pretty much what the chameleon kit ends up being if you use what's in the box. And that's pretty pitiful. And so we are going to, uh, we are going to do better things with this. And we got somebody asking, did you see Neptune's own put together chameleon kit? Yes, I did. And it is a uh, high time somebody did that. Glad she did that. Uh, and so this is what the chameleon kit comes with. And it's some of this, about half of this stuff you can use, half of this stuff I'd say, uh, get rid of it. But uh, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to show you how to set up this chameleon kit. And so if you have somebody who is trying to raise a baby, this is what you can uh, you can use. But you have to add stuff to the chameleon kit. Um, and it, it will surprise everybody to know that we will use the, uh, the light fixture that comes with the chameleon kit. That's usually the reason why nobody likes it. And for good reason, by the way. But you have to do something extra with the uh, with the kit to make it uh, avail uh, uh, able to be used by your baby. And uh, this is this is what's important. I know on the internet, on uh, Facebook, and everybody uh, on, on social media, everybody black and white chameleon kit is bad. And 
that's an easy way to present things. And in the chameleon community, we have to present things simply on social media because you only get one line. But what's important for those of you who really want to understand chameleon herpeticulture, we need to understand why. Why is it bad? Why is it evil? Why is it the most horrible thing in the world? And there are a number of reasons for that. Uh, but when we understand the reasons, we also understand the limitations of the black and white soundbite that the chameleon kit is horrible. And the, the real main reason is, number one, it's a small cage. Number two, it uh, the UVB light is very weak. But we're going to get to that. Thing is, when you understand the limits and you understand why we're talking about it, and saying it's a bad thing, you will also be able to know when it can be used. And that's very important because all of these tools, they're, they're all just tools. And uh, we need to learn. Uh, we become good at what we're at our art if we understand why uh, they are not working in certain situations and when they would work. So. Oh, actually, let's go ahead. So what I did, uh, if you want to uh, make this cage appropriate for babies, what we need to do is give it some, uh, the baby's places to hide. And so the way I've done this is I've put in two tall plants in back and the peperomia in front. That's just decoration for me because um, eh, I like it. Um, but uh, the plants you can use, there's there's many plants available. Uh, good old ficus benjamina, Schifflera, the uh, china doll, and the Petrera aquatica. There was another one that I used, the Aurelia, that's a lesser known. But as you can see, it has this, uh, is this very fluffy, uh, fluffy leaves. And these are all great for hatchlings because hatchlings need small uh, things to grab onto. They got those uh, those little feet. And uh, so lighting system, if we're going to be using this, uh, we need more light. The light system that comes with the chameleon kit is just, it's not, it, there is no white light. There is no light for plants. And so it, it's a really poor thing. And I add on a dual T5 fixture. You can get these 24 inch wide uh, dual T5 fixtures. And uh, that gives enough light to, uh, to to illuminate and let plants live. And of course, it's better for the chameleons. Now, I use 6,500 Ks in here. Uh, usually, people like to put UVB lights in there. And although that is possible, UVB lights, T5s are pretty powerful. And we want to make sure if we're using a smaller cage that we're not going to be blasting the poor little chameleon. It's one reason why we have very thick foliage there, and that's so uh, to give the chameleon protection. Well, another thing that gives the chameleon protection is actually the reason why nobody likes the chameleon kit, which is a good reason, is because UVB is so weak. But it's incorrect to say that there's no UVB coming out of that. There actually is a very usable cone of L, uh, UVB coming off of this uh, off of this uh, CFL UVB lamp. The reason why it's not useful for chameleons that are like over three months old is because the chameleon has to fit into that little orange area. That orange area is the UV index between three and UV index of six. You get all of what one inch, but if you put your chameleon uh, where the back of the chameleon is two inches from the top of the cage, uh, you're going to be having effective UVB coming out of that lamp. And the wonderful thing is, it's so weak now; it's an advantage that you can actually uh, you don't have to worry about over radiating your baby. This is the one case where that very weak CFL UVB actually is an advantage. So uh, this is, uh, you see this uh, this chart right here, there is the exact place that you have to put your, uh, your bendy branch. Uh, that vine that comes with the kit, 
you put it so the back of the chameleon will be two inches from the UVB bulb and you will get effective UVB out of that mini bulb. And um, now everybody, if you want to, if you want to set up an adult size cage for your hatchling, more power to you. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, but what I am doing here is showing a, a cheap way, a simple way that many people will come uh, that have a hatchling, they will probably have access to this cage, if not been sent home with the cage. And so part of what we have to do as educators in the community is meet people where they are and help them with the equipment they have. And this is how we can do it. Um, Okay, well, I'll take a, ooh, we got uh, Howard saying to play devil's advocate. Would it be better to get the Reptibreeze medium and buy the rest separately? Um, the chameleon kit comes with the 16 by 16 by 30. And so what Howard is asking is, would it be better to just put everything, uh, buy everything in pieces? And the answer is yes. It would be. The reason why I'm spending the time talking about the Chameleon kit as a product is because it is so ubiquitous. Everybody has it at the shows, at the pet stores. I, I kind of hate this product, and I have for many, many years because of the damage that it's done. Uh, it is sold with chameleons that are just too big to be able to be used in this cage. And so there's a lot of reasons why, legitimate reasons to uh, wish this cage just didn't never existed. But the fact is, it does exist. And it is sold. Uh, many of the people who are buying eggs at a show are not sophisticated members of the community. They're not uh, experienced. They don't know better. And if I had those people uh, grab piecemeal, it, it would just be too much for them. And they'd go with somebody who gave them easier advice. And uh, I and I don't think anybody, uh, very rarely, I think, do people who buy chameleons uh, on impulse, do they find me? I, I The stuff I make is more for the experienced community. And so what I'm hoping to do through presenting this is for the experienced community to be listening to this and saying, okay, I see how it can work. And if someone comes to me with a egg that they're going to hatch and a chameleon kit, this is how I can make it work while we help them transition to their setup that's going to last for the life of the chameleon. Uh, if someone came to me immediately and said, hey, I've got this hatchling, how should I take care of it? I, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't start them off like this. I'd say, okay, <laughs> you, you've come to the right place. I'm going to, we're going to start in a 24 by 24 by 48 cage. And that hatchling is going to absolutely love it. Um, so uh, this is, this is the reason why I'm talking about the chameleon kit. Uh, I'm, I, I would not, um, the, this is more for, and in fact, if somebody came to me, I wouldn't, I'd say, don't get, don't buy an egg, <laughs> get a well-started three month old. Um, and, uh, Heather adds people at shows and local store assume that the seller knows what they're talking about. Yes. Ended up, I ended up with the kit before going online and finding bill. And that's exactly, that's exactly why. I'm doing this and I'm talking about the chameleon kids because so many people have it. And since so many people have it, so many people need to figure out how to use it to take care of the chameleon while they're in the middle of the transition. And those experienced people in the community, uh, please, I'd like you to listen and uh, absorb this information so you can help them through the transition and the chameleon can be taken care of. And, and really uh, between zero and three months, that size chameleon will do great in the setup that I'm showing. 
uh, and and I've shown it. I've done it repeatedly. And the uh, the only reason why <laughs> the only reason why I don't go and start recommending this is because I I, I want people. I'd rather people use larger cages. So, uh, my local reptile store sells the kit, not because they like it, but because if they don't carry it, the customer will go elsewhere to buy it. That is correct. And it, it's it's interesting that a local reptile store would know enough to say, okay, yeah, we don't we don't like it at all. But uh, yeah, there are some good reptile uh, stores out there. And at shows, see, this is the thing. We have a real problem at shows that vendors bring in. They don't understand chameleons that much or they don't care. And so they're going to be selling. They want something to send the person home with. And they neglect to mention that this is a temporary solution only. Um, and uh, Gabriel says, this is great because most people already have the kit once they start asking questions. Exactly. That's, that's, you know, I, I'm on, I'm on Facebook and, uh, I like to monitor Facebook, even if I'm not as active on it and uh, just to see what people come with. And yes, so many people come with the kit. So we need to understand the kit. We need to, we, we can't just say it's horrible and not understand it. Uh, you go in the funniest thing is you got people advising on something they don't understand. Uh, have you ever heard that uh, people say, oh, the curly Q lights, uh, UVB lights are ineffective and say that's why you uh, you shouldn't get the, uh, the chameleon kit? Well, if anybody who's had the chameleon kit that looks, the UVB light is not a curly Q. It's not, there's two types of CFLs. There's one that has the U bends and there's the one that has the pigtail. And you keep saying, if you, the good old Facebook keeps saying the curly cues are not effective. Well, somebody takes out the uh, the light of the chameleon kit and says, "Well, this isn't a curly cue. It's the U bend." Eh, okay, we're fine. And that's the problem when you don't understand what you're talking about. And so, uh, I, I you got to understand the chameleon kit. I hate it, but. I've used it extensively, so I understand it inside and out, and I can tell somebody how to use it while they're going through the transition process. Because some people, they're surprised that they have to do a transition process. And all of a sudden, now they're looking at hundreds of dollars, and some people aren't able to do that right away. So we in the community, um, you know, once once it's done, We've got to we got to put the judgmental, self righteous stuff behind us and start and take care of them. They they came to us, uh, and yes, they came to us late. They should have come to us before. But sometimes you don't need you don't know you need a community until something goes wrong. You go to the show and uh, they say, "Oh, it's easy. You just get this little baby and it'll hatch, and then you just give it fruit flies. You'll be fine." So they don't know how complicated and what they're getting themselves into. And once they do, that's when they come and they're looking for more information. So guys, we got it. We got to let the past be the past. We're not going to do anything by shaming these people who are coming to us saying, okay, now I know I need help. Don't make them feel bad. Okay. Somehow we've got to get ahead of the point of sale. That's a challenge. I realize it, but let's not take it out on people that are coming to us. So we need to understand the chameleon kit just so we can help people who have the chameleon kit. Uh, let's see. James says, it'd be nice if ZoomEd came out with a deluxe kit with the right stuff. They actually came out with a deluxe kit. They call it a deluxe kit. And it's like they did a couple of right things, 50% the right things, and then the 50% is still not good at all. So, you know, thanks for the thanks for the attempt, but you know, it's good that they're listening, but uh they they just didn't do it right. So, uh yeah, forget I I don't think we can we can't rely on Zoomed to come out with anything. Um you know, if we want to write kit, go look at Neptune's kit that's offered through Pangea. Uh at least Neptune knows uh <laughs> what chameleons need and uh, was not afraid to put together a kit. I mean, she had to use every, uh, things that were available, 
So it's it's not, uh, you know, you have to use what's available, but that's you use the Neptune kit. You're going to get a good, uh, good setup. Now we just need to <laughs> get people at the point of sale at reptile shows to know that this exists. But, you know, uh, that that's been the perennial problem. Yeah, I like this. Aren't they saying the deluxe kit is for Parsons? Yeah, they were saying this. Uh, this other kit was Parsons too. They uh, they uh, are footloose and fancy free with facts. Uh, let's see. So I agree. Buying a large kit for beginners is better. It's more work to maintain the baby, but it's one and done. As opposed to telling people they have to get another cage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's no. I understand having a hatchling in a 24 by 24 by 48 inch cage is nerve wracking for people. I understand it, but that baby is going to be fine. All you have to do is provide the conditions and that baby will take care of itself. Um, so, but, uh, but, uh, I don't, I don't have the, uh, the uh, luxury of talking to everybody before they start down the process. I bought the kit as that is what the store told me. Luckily, I found you and slowly converted my system for my baby. Kept the old one for outside if I ever take him there. Yep. I mean, the uh, the cage isn't a bad cage. Uh, it's just the entire system is, you know, not that great. So. And Steve, yep. Steve Hefsner uh, is well acquainted with the kit being a constant issue. And uh, so if you're going to be doing anything with the community, you just have to understand this system. And how it says one thing I'll never support is cheap thermometer and humidity. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like those either. So I, uh, once you have that, uh, that uh, stick set up, the vine set up so the back of the chameleon is two inches from the uh, the UVB bulb. You just got to make sure that the uh, the heat is not too much, and uh, you either use a thermometer, you use the back of your hand, uh, and uh, and make sure it's okay. I, I'm not going to go into the detail of the hydration cycle. I put all sorts of work into this, and then I realized I could spend an entire day talking about the hydration cycle. Um, but if you have any questions on the Chameleon Academy, I have videos, uh, I have the website, or you can ask me. Uh, but uh, you know, even with the, uh, the Chameleon Kit, you can do a combination of Fogger, Mister, and Dripper. Um, let's see. We need, we need to find out how to add the smaller cage to the bigger cage for more room and not wasting it. I'm not handy enough on my own. That's a, I'm not sure how you would do that in a way that is worth the amount of effort it would take to combine the cages. I, I would just get uh, two two of the XLs and knit them together, and then you have a four foot wide cage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Throwing some shade at the at their uh, little cheap thermometers. All right, I get it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now here's, here's a couple of things for increased hydration. If somebody's having a problems with, uh, number one, there being a mess of uh, water on the floor. And if you need to increase humidity, so, uh, Zoomed only offers substrate trays, which go inside the ha uh, cage. They're easier to, uh, to make, but they're not useful for, they're not great for chameleons. In this case, if somebody has a chameleon kit and you want to get them a drainage tray, then have them buy the substrate tray for the next size up. The uh, the substrate tray made for the large, the 18 by 18, uh, fits uh, the uh, 16 by 16, the fits right inside of it. Uh, very convenient. So you get a drainage tray there. Now, you, you need a standoff or something. So if you, if you have water that, uh, 
that uh, gathers in the tray. You do need to uh, have the cage sitting on something just so there's a little bit of area so the cage doesn't flood. But uh, yeah, you can just pick something that the cage can sit on. Uh, and then you can use the uh, shrink fit window insulation for the sides of the cage if you want to increase humidity. So, do, 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 do. CCT is asking any dimensions besides 24 by 24 or 48 for adults. Yeah, anything bigger. Um, we use 24 by 24 by 48 as uh, the minimum standard because that's what's available. But if you can make your own cage, then, or you can buy a larger cage, do it, do it. Um, it it's, it's almost painful to say that uh, two by two by four is a minimum cage for Panthers and Vales and Jacksons. I, I'd love to give them at least 30 inches wide. Um, and, and yes, those six inches make all the difference in the world. It really did, does. And here's, uh, let me get rid of some of this stuff. Here's ways for emotional security. Um, it, it's really important. You've got a baby who's going to be very nervous. Um, very nervous because it's a baby. And babies are, uh, anything can eat babies, even praying mantises. So they got to watch out for things. So giving them. Uh, 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 things to make them emotionally secure is important. You can do this by raising the cage up so uh, th they're above your head. Now, someone may say, wow, these are babies. They're used to being close down to the floor. Uh, while that is true, uh, this, does, this does play into what chameleons are and what they will grow into. And so just, you know, um, don't be looming over your chameleon and they will feel safer. You, and you'll notice it. You'll, if they are high up, they won't be hiding in the foliage as much. And that, that's just a simple way of, uh, seeing from behavior. And then there's visual isolation. You can put things on the side, opaque things on the side of the cage or put the cage against the wall. So they don't have to worry about what's coming at them from all different sides. Just, uh, things to think about. Um, Howard says, Bill, your big cages are amazing. If I had the room, I would buy it. Yeah, I, a four foot wide cages are wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. CCT is asking, now can you go wider or more depth to accommodate for height? Uh, wider, if you've got a four foot tall cage, that's pretty good. Have that uh, up high, like 30 inches up in the air but then go wider. Wide width is more important to a chameleon than height of the cage. Now, the height of the perching stick relative to you is important, but if you have a three-foot tall cage set up so their stick looks down on you, so they can look down on you from the basking, that's going to be a whole lot more effective than a four-foot tall cage sitting on the floor. They don't care how far below them the floor of their cage is. They care how far below them your head is because you're, they want to feel safe. Glass or screen for juvenile carpet chameleons. That depends on what your conditions are. You're going to be looking for 50% uh, humidity during the day. Uh, up to 100% at night. And so you have that ebb and flow of humidity. Uh, if you're, you live in a very dry area, you're going to want glass. If you live in an area that's got a lot of humidity, you're going to want screen because you don't want to trap the air. So it, it really depends on your conditions, how closely your ambient conditions match uh, the uh, care guide, your target conditions. I just put a bucket underneath and drill holes. I'd like to be able to use the bottom door. Yeah, that'll do it too. Uh, you, yeah, you you have to work on that to make sure that the uh, it doesn't the cage doesn't leak out elsewhere. But uh, that's definitely 
that's definitely a nice way to do it to get the the, the uh, water out of the cage visual isolation really helped my panther yeah it's amazing and they don't always need it throughout their entire life it's like they only need that security when they're small or when they're scared and once they know they're safe it's amazing they they just don't need that security they don't need to hide anymore once they know they're safe but you need to provide that so they develop that feeling of being safe and so uh, I, I always have a hiding place in my cage even when they stop using it and i just like and i'm sure they like knowing that it's there i think that's just really important for their emotional uh emotional health and, and yes i am very serious about us taking into account their emotional health where it's they're, they're they're living beings just like us and so that's going to determine their health uh, their physical health let's see bill do you make a dragon strand pvc screen cage uh i if you're talking about a pvc cage with a screen front uh, i can make that uh, right now i have a screen cage that has a pvc back and then i have a hybrid cage that's um that's pvc and acrylic it does have the the screen service door and the screen top for the chimney effect um but I, you know, I, I can make a uh, pretty easily can make a um, a hybrid cage with three three PVC sides and the, the front being screen. If that's uh, the, if that would fit your needs, uh, if anybody is interested in something like that, just email me, and we, we can talk about what it would take. Um, some people put two Raptor breeds together as well. Yes, that is a cheap way of uh uh putting uh, getting a four foot cage i absolutely recommend it i even have a video on how to do it it's like the five things you can do to uh inc increase the quality of life for your chameleon or something like that. i i have a um a video that says how i put those two together and kayla very good to have you glad you found your way here See, when I use a large cage for a young baby, I keep my fruit fly cultures right in the cage. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I guess that takes care of uh, that takes care of that. I generally let's see if I have my how far where where do we can go. Let's see if I can find. I think I did a picture of how I do it. There's a case study. There we go. That's how I do it in my cages. I just have the little deli cups and I put bananas and, and apple and oranges and then the fruit flies. This is how you keep, by the way, how you keep fruit flies inside your cage. Uh, you give them fruit. That's all they want in life. They're not going to try to get away if you give them what they need. And so this just becomes a shooting gallery for, uh, for the chameleon. Let's see. Let's go back to... Do, 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 do. And uh, let's see. Okay, let's go. Uh, how long should we fog at night? I have it on and off throughout the night, but wondering if I should run it longer. Uh, take a look at the poop. If the poop is nice and it's just a healthy poop and um, it's firm but moist, then you're doing fine. Uh, you can also... Uh, run a dripper in the afternoon and see if the chameleon goes and drinks from the dripper. We we actually want to get it to where the chameleon doesn't want to drink from the dripper. When they're hydrated enough, they won't do that. And so that's those are the tests you got to use and uh, and adjust your hydration accordingly. Inside trays are terrible. Insects always seem to go along the edge in that. Yeah, don't don't do inside trays. It's just a big mess. What do you do when the baby decides to climb on the screen top? Wouldn't it be much more in danger for getting burned when the lamps are right on the top? Yes, they will. That is a compromise that uh, this is something you have to watch out for. 
is when uh, is babies climbing the screen. And so that's, the, yeah, that, uh, that is a very good point, Ranunculus. Uh, so, yeah, you have to watch out for that. Um, yeah. And uh, do, when, I, when I do a setup outside of the chameleon kit, I have things up off. I use the, uh, the deep dome, um, uh, the deep dome uh, basking bulb that, that keeps the bulb away from the, uh, the top of the cage. So this is absolutely not the ideal setup. This is uh, helping people with what they've got. Um, I am constantly buying new plants. Any tips? Not a fan of artificial tree. Yeah, uh, with plants, it's it's very simple uh, to understand, to implement. It's a little bit complicated. Either it's too much water, not enough water, too much light, not enough light. And, and really, if you take a look at those four, you're going to find the issue. Um, too much water, the mister is, you've got a mister pointed at the soil, not enough water, very easy, uh, especially with these pothos I got back here, you spray all you want, it gets on the leaves, but it never gets to the soil. That That's my biggest problem. Uh, I've taken care of not enough light because I have excess light. I make sure I have as much light as possible and uh, too much light. Well, I keep them away from the basking branch so they don't get, um, don't get parched. Uh, but like, I, I have a problem here where uh, the, the, the light is nice and powerful, but it's very drying as well. So yeah, I've got to, I have to watch that they get enough water. Will it hurt your chameleon if the humidity is high seventies most of the time? Uh, no. The humidity itself is not the problem. The two things that are a problem are uh, if it's stagnant air, sometimes to create humidity, we've got to trap air and we've got to decrease the airflow. It's, it's a balance. It's a compromise. We need enough air exchange so we don't get stagnant air. As long as you have air exchange, the humidity can be 70%. No problem. We also want the surfaces to dry out because that's where we don't want mold and bacteria and fungus to grow. Uh, so the surfaces have to dry out. And this is the reason why we try to bring the humidity down during the day. Obviously, we won't want it 100% all the time. But uh, like in Madagascar, uh, there were days that were just 85 degrees during the middle of the day. Uh, not 85 degrees. 85% humidity during the middle of the day. And so... I, uh, the humidity itself is not the problem. It's when it's stagnant air or all the surfaces remain wet all the time. So these are, uh, um, we also want to be careful because uh, during the day, the temperature rises. And as the temperature rises, it takes more water to be inside the air to get relative humidity of 70%. So there's more water in the air when it's say 85 degrees or what now, 30 Celsius. Uh, at 70%, 30 Celsius, there is more water in the air than at say 60 degrees or I don't know, uh, 17 Celsius. Uh, that's just the way relative humidity works. And of course, the more water that's in the air, the less oxygen, I mean, we're, we're bringing in more and more water vapor. Uh, so it can get stuffy if we start, if your 70% is when it's really hot out, uh, you may get a problem with it being too stuffy. So yeah, very one of those very complicated situations. Um, Uh, best way to help a female chameleon recover after egg laying, in your opinion. Uh, privacy, lots of water, lots of food, and uh, <laughs> and then lots of privacy. Um, Ryan said silkworms are magic. Yeah, 
Silkworms are really great. It's a good way to uh, hydrate them. Let's see, do love. Mine seem to love an overwhelming amount of plants for hiding. Yep. And especially as babies, they like that. They like that very much. Um, yeah, one, one thing to uh, also that I didn't say, uh, be careful with misters. Uh, with babies, they can get blasted. Uh, and yeah, just, just be careful. They got small bodies, small bodies. Um, James says, I didn't know you would customize Dragon Strand cages. Very, very slightly. I really can't do a whole lot, but, uh, but James, if there's something, the problem really comes with, um, changing the, the dimensions of the frames that becomes a, a more of an issue. Uh, but uh, anyway, James, you can uh, talk to me if uh, you have something you are particularly interested in. Um, okay, we were talking about uh, monitoring the uh, hydration by looking at the poop. And yeah, if you have a soil floor, uh, especially if it's a bioactive system, you're, you're not going to see poop for long or often. And, and this is also a problem. Even if you have a clear floor, but you have it heavily planted, th that poop gets lost in all of the uh, leaves and stuff. So you do, it is good to have multiple ways that you are measuring what's going on. Let's see, how long would you wait to start supplementing hatchling feeders? I go about two weeks. Uh, I don't. I don't have a magic number, and I know there's a lot, of, a number of people who are militant as to when they will start supplementing. I've never found a whole lot of difference in my experience, so I am not militant at it on it. Um, I wait probably about two weeks, and and my reason for doing that is I, I'm more concerned about them having to rehydrate all of that uh, powder and I, I i don't want them to dehydrate um so that, that's just my thinking <clears throat> let's see so uh but i i i mean i don't think yeah i guess uh sir uh, ryan says he does it right away yeah i'm People, I've done it right away. I've waited for a while. I don't notice a difference. Okay, Sublife, I have a question. My panther hatchling isn't eating food. It's five days old. I've placed fruit flies and bean beetles, but he doesn't seem interested. Lots of things that could be going on. Uh, my first question would be, do you see any poop? Uh, is, number one, is he already full? Has he eaten everything he wants to eat? Uh, if that's the case, you will see a lot of poop. Is he feeling sick for whatever reason? That's another reason why they won't eat. And uh, if that's the case, you need to figure out what's what's going on with the husbandry and what you can change. Because when a hatchling gets sick, they go down really quickly. Now, there's a problem. One of the big problems with selling eggs to people uh, is that the hatchling, the health of the hatchling can be greatly affected by how the incubation is done. And so when you have the incubation and you're just having it sit in your house, there can be things that happen during incubation that are going to affect the health of the hatchling when it hatches. And uh, that's a huge variable there. So if that's the case, then you've got a chore ahead of you. But don't assume that. Uh, look deeply into the husbandry to see if there's something that is uh, bothering them. Sometimes if it's too cold they and they can't warm up, then they won't eat. That's just an example. Oh, Here's a serious one. If you have a newborn with bad crippled feet so they can't climb, do you tend to give them extra help or do you put them out of their misery? 
That is a difficult question. A every, almost every breeder has to face sooner or later, and it's a personal, personal judgment call. You got to look at that that chameleon. Say, is is this chameleon miserable? Is there are they just hanging on to life, or is there the spark of life in them, and they just have a disability? That, that's up for you to decide. And I know and there's no e easy answer. There is no easy answer. And so, you know, you just go with what your heart tells you because there's no real scale that you can apply to that decision. Um, and nowadays, use low pressure, high flow pumps, not as harsh spray for the chameleons. Okay, that's a good idea. Uh, I like to use fogging because it doesn't spray the chameleon. Uh, and so that's what I do. Uh, I do. Ex I like doing extensive fogging during the night. And when they wake up, there's a dew on the leaves. And so there's no pressure spray going on anywhere. Uh, if they, they've got water droplet on the leaves when they wake up and they can uh, drink if they want to. And as long as their poop uh, is uh, shows they're hydrated, uh, that works really well for me. I think the hatchlings get enough from their egg sac. They definitely get some from the egg sac. And the thing is, we just don't know when it ends, when it runs out. And there's no way to tell. So we've just got to make a decision somehow as to when we're going to start supplementing. So, uh, all right, let's see. Let's go on to the next slide here. Here's a case study for Lauren. And Lauren uh, came and said, hey, what do you think about this setup for a hatchling? And so let's look at what Lauren's done. First of all, that's a, if we look at the left-hand side, uh, Lauren's got a T5 5.0 UVB and has raised it up a couple of inches. And so that's perfect. Uh, the problem with having a T5 UVB on the cage top is the first couple of inches for the T5 uh, for the 5.0 is just higher than you want your chameleon exposed to. Um, and, and it's like six inches if you use a 10.0 or 12%. And so looking at how far the basking branch is under the UVB light, I think that's uh, that's done very well. So uh, UVB is taken care of. That's great. Uh, look at the inside of the cage, and we have a heavily planted inside. Uh, that's perfect. That's going to give the the baby the cover that it needs. So we're good on that side. Uh, there's got a, um, a basking light in the back. So, okay, as long as it's not too hot, um, that's fine. And Lauren's got a thermometer there, so she can use that to check. Uh, the cage is wrapped in plastic. Okay, that's to keep in the humidity. And there's, uh, I can see the fogger hose. So, uh, and uh, let's see, there's hand misting going on here. So I think the chameleon is taken care of as far as the hydration. Food, that is a, a clear, but if we look at the middle picture, we see a clear food dish. So uh, the my only concern would be the chameleon I, I like my clear dishes. I let them get a little bit like water spots and stuff. So the chameleon knows that that's a barrier. Uh, looks like there's some banana in there. That's going to attract the fruit flies. The only thing I would do differently on the food dish is maybe attach a little stick to that push pin. So if the chameleon fell in for whatever reason, could easily climb out. Uh, so that's what I would do. And other than that, this is looking like a pretty good setup. Uh, so I think uh, it's obviously it's a small cage, so uh, it'll have to be replaced soon. But I think Lauren's going to get her feet under her pretty quickly. Uh, the backstory is she uh, she uh, inherited this hatchling uh, or adopted was given this was given an egg that the original owner was not as uh, had given up on, so gave it to Lauren. And so Lauren uh, hatched out this uh, hatchling and uh, wasn't necessarily 
uh, planning on having a chameleon, but uh, she's doing a great job. Let's see. Let's see. Ryan says, for my tent cages, I have an under tank heat source and water tray on the bottom and keep ambient humidity with evaporation. Okay, that's that's a great way to do it. Miss King during the morning, evening, improvise. Yeah. And uh, since the it's an under tank heater, they're not going to be, uh, it's not going to be making it a sauna or well, uh, let's see, was it a steam room? <laughs> sauna is dry, but uh, steam room. Yeah. So uh, that, that works. Howard's saying my Miss King is a savior. Yeah. Miss King has done, does a really great, a great job dousing the entire cage in uh, uh in mist i i like mine but yeah it's it's a problem on the smaller cages because there's just there's just uh, too much pressure up front but on my uh, 24 by 24s and my four foot wide cages absolute uh miss king is such a good product um and it, there's just so few competitors out there. I know there's a lot of misting systems, but they're just not good. It's one of those things where uh, there isn't, there, there's the good, Miss King is the good mister. Uh, all those others, I just wouldn't bother. Um, and and you would think that someone would come up with a a compromise between quality and price. But, you know, the closest thing you got is the Exoterra. Uh, monsoon but there's just it's not that much cheaper than this king so it's not worth it's not worth it um <laughs> all right so gabriel's gonna make us all uh all jealous moving to south florida chameleon keeping has never been easier yep yep that would that would make sense <laughs> oh florida florida's easier than california Question, how much do you clean your cages? Do hatchlings even make enough poop? Cleaning the hoses of your fog or the drain tray? All right, so cage-wise, uh, it depends on whether I have a clear clear floor or if I have a soil floor. If I have a soil floor, I just don't clean don't clean the poop. Just make sure I've got springtails and stuff in there. Um, and uh, if it's a clear floor... We just wipe it up. But chameleon, the babies, if you have one baby in a cage, the the, the poop it creates is not, not substantial. Uh, cleaning the hoses of your fogger as needed. Uh, like once a weekend, it works well for me. I just take it off and uh, rinse it out, dry it thoroughly, and good to go. Uh, drainage tray, I, I suck the water out using a wet dry vac, but... Uh, I'll probably actually clean the drainage tray once a year. Uh, the, the what's in the drainage tray is separate from the chameleon. They're never, never in contact with any of the water or anything down there. And so, I mean, as long as it's not smelling, um, because something escaped and died and is decomposing in there. And as long as, um, the mosquitoes haven't found it and started breeding in it, uh, yeah, I, I don't have to touch them. With your fogging, do you see your cams drink during the day? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. Um, now, it, it it can take some time to dial it in just right, but you know, I, I don't see my chameleons drink during the day. Um, since I have humidity at close to one hundred percent, I see very little, if no drink. Yeah, that's that's what happens. You're you're seeing exactly why fogging is is uh, so useful. And and by the way, we're going to be having um, this month. We're going to have uh, two two intense podcasts where we're talking about fogging and uh, and the hydration from fogging. Let's see, Heather, you can try giving those little feet a rub. Maybe get some circulation to get them working. Who knows? Maybe just give them a little bit more mobility and. So Genevieve is talking about the issue with Heather. Uh, I guess her babies are having trouble climbing or using feet. 
Um, yeah, Heather also check to make sure it's not stuck shed. Uh, a lot of time, uh, well, not a lot of times I have had the case where the babies would shed, but the, the shed around the feet didn't come off. And so what looked like them being misformed was actually, they just didn't get rid of the shed. So make sure it's not shed. Uh, I mean, that, that was, I, I had a baby that had a feet, a foot that was stuck like this and couldn't use it. And then I figured out, well, wait a minute, that's just old skin. And so once I took the old shed off, it's perfectly functional. So uh, that hopefully that would be it. But uh, yeah. And uh, thank you, Genevieve. Thank you for the uh, suggestion. And Heather says, I'll try it. Our, yeah, it'll still the size of my thumbnail. So I'm not sure I can, but I'll start with a, yeah, yeah. Start with a Q-tip. And, and it's really hard to do anything with babies. It really is. Um, okay. Heather says it's definitely crippled. Uh, all right. He was only a few days old when I got him and hasn't grown since. Okay. So he's got some issues. Uh, one thing I hope Heather, just to say, uh, are you keeping them separate? Make sure you're keeping them separate because if you don't, it's very easy for the submissive one to just not eat and die. Um, and Ryan says, learned some good tips today. Great episode. I always pick up something. Hey, good, good. I'm glad, Ryan. I'm glad you uh, found something useful here. And my Christodis is the only one I see drinking regularly. All the others drink occasionally. Yeah, Christodis is definitely they like their their moisture and so my cristatus get uh get a lot of the fogging and the misting um yeah some species especially the like lowland species that come from <laughs> rainforest and stuff and cristatus is one of those all right my friends it is coming to the end of our hour of chameleon stuff anybody have any last questions or comments um really appreciate you all being here and uh, hanging out this saturday with me here's my my uh coffee cup and oh it's too bad that jenny isn't here she always asks for dad jokes and and i i kind of got a lifeline and i actually had some dad jokes so, oh, everybody. All right. It's sometimes hard to say goodbye, but uh, I'm going to have to do that. I'm working on uh, our, our episodes and our videos for this uh, this month. And so oh, Richard, <laughs> Richard just got here. Um, hello. Robert Hayes says email address. Well, Bill at chameleonacademy.com. That works. So. All right, everybody. Yes, Eliza, the one week I was prepared for dad jokes. It took me many months. So anyway, everybody, thank you very much for dropping by. And I'll see you. Uh, by the way, I will be uh, will be doing a live on Instagram at uh, Tuesday at 5 p.m. And by the way, if anybody here is interested in being an influencer, content creator, or entrepreneur in the uh, reptile world, or just anywhere, any niche community, uh, I have another outreach called the Reptile Entrepreneur, and tomorrow night at 5 p.m. Pacific, I have a live session on the Reptile Entrepreneur YouTube channel to where we talk about the things, the, the issues facing us doing uh, entrepreneurial stuff in the reptile world. So if any of you have interest in that, uh, I invite you to join my other outreaches where uh, we talk about different stuff, different stuff. So. All right. And uh, yeah, Katrina, I have, uh, I will have those fogging podcasts up uh, probably the uh, in two weeks, probably in two weeks. So, all right, all, thank you very much. And I will see you next time.